lecture, we will see the different kind of processes that we can have in an organization. Even if every organization is different, also when operating in the same industry, we can classify business processes in macro categories that are common to all the organizations. Drawing from the value chain model by Porter, we can distinguish between primary processes and support processes. Primary processes are those processes that directly create value for the final customer. The performances of this kind of processes directly impact on customer satisfaction. Typical examples of these processes are product development, production and manufacturing, or sales and marketing. Support processes are instead those processes that are necessary to support primary processes with providing specific competencies and activities, but don't directly create value for the customer. Typical examples of this kind of processes are human resource management, procurement or quality management. The value of this kind of processes is not recognized directly by the final customer because typically the customer of support processes is an internal customer to the company. We can have two types of support processes, governance processes and operational support processes. Operational support processes have as a final internal customers functions that are typically at the medium or low level of the organization. For example, HR management can put in place operational support to help different organizational units at the medium-low level, such as different production departments, to provide support in recruiting the workforce and managing it, it from an administrative point of view. Government processes instead have as customers the stakeholders of the company or the management itself. For example, strategic planning and control can provide support and coordination to the functional directors in order to align the activities and outputs of the single units to the strategic goals of the company. Of course, different types of organizations have different specific primary and support processes. Starting from the general classification we just saw, every company should identify its own list of primary and support processes, depending on the products or service delivered and its business model. We can imagine, for example, that the primary and support processes of an insurance company are different from the primary and support processes of a manufacturing company producing goods. The classifications we just saw show us as the description of processes can be done at different levels of analysis and details. We can in fact deploy processes in sub-processes following hierarchical deployment. In particular, we can have two different deployment logics drill down or disaggregation, and specification or specialization. With drill down or disaggregation logic, we divide the macro process into processes and sub-processes, which can be deployed into phases, which can be deployed into activities, which finally can be deployed into basic operations. For example, if we consider one of the macro processes of a bank, such as the management of a bank account, we can deploy it in different processes, such as opening of the account, ordinary management of the account, periodic control or closure. Each process, such as the ordinary management of the account, can then be deployed in sub-processes, each sub-process in phases, each phase in activities, and each activity into basic operations. With specification or specialization logic instead, we deploy the process specifying the different process variations that we can have. For example, we can distinguish the procurement between procurement of services and procurement of physical goods. Different variations of the same process may share some phases or activities, but they mainly differ because of peculiar phases. It's important to mention that drill down and disaggregation logics may be used together to deploy the same process at different levels of analysis.